You know, why do all these resellers know about this spot right next to the massage parlor? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's a group of resellers here in Tulsa, bro. They're AI people, bro. It was him being mad at me for something I felt was good for the business. Yeah. Me being honestly kind of jealous of him living out my dream right. here in the store while yeah. I'm trying to financially back it. I don't like the Packers. Passion. You like this passionate, Steel, right? passionate Packer hater. Passionate Packer hater? I'm a Steelers fan, bro. And, uh, you know, like, what, 2012, whatever? Yeah. You know, waxed us in that Super Bowl? Yeah. I don't even like the Packers. Can't let it go. I just like the shirt. Oh, well. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what is up with you guys? Everybody hates Jabber. We are back. We are back. We are back, guys. Season two. Season two is in full effect, guys. We are streaming on all platforms. So anywhere you guys listen to your podcast, whether that be Apple, Spotify, YouTube, all those good places, you guys can go and check us out. Just type in Everybody Hates Jabber. And we are streaming, guys. Let's go. Season two. I'm super excited for that. Um, this is season two, the first episode of season two. Hell yeah. So you're kicking off the season, man, yeah. with, with, with the racks. You guys see it here. You know what I'm saying? We've got the owner operator of the racks. So sure. go ahead, man. Just give it introduce. Intro, oh, uh, go ahead and just introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are, what you do. You know. Get All right, uh, Sean Matthews. Gotcha. Um, I basically run the racks. I mean, yeah. I, I started this thing a little over two years ago with a good amount of help. Not yeah. gonna lie. And uh, now it's just rolling, man. I collect vintage. I sell vintage. Yeah. I, Everything vintage. Yeah, man. It's Eat, life. Sleep, it's die, life. Vintage, huh? It's a lifestyle. Yeah, it's life. there, this is true, man. That is true. And, you know, that's funny because a lot of the people that are really heavy into vintage, you can definitely tell that it is like a lifestyle yeah. for them. You know? it, it consumes you, man. Yeah. It's like it's like a an obsessive personality type. Right. Just, like anyone you meet that's successful at all, at any level of this game, is has obsessive personality traits. Yeah. And it, everyone. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit, man. Like, how did it, how do you think that started? You know what I mean? Like, when did that obsessiveness start for you? Man, I, I don't know. I probably, I think I got my first computer when I was like 10 years old. Uh -huh. And I started doing graphic design. I started building websites and stuff. Yeah. And my mom would have to, like, pry me off the computer because I'd be, you know, bloodshot eyes at 10, 11 years old. Yeah. And, She'd find me at 4.30 in the morning, just like, I have to finish this one last design or this one last web page. And, like, yeah. I just couldn't stop, addicted really? to it. Or video games, yeah. you know, playing Halo as a kid or whatever. Dude, Halo was that shit, bro. Halo was the shit. Halo yeah. was that. Dude, in my opinion, bro, because I'm not really, like, super into video games now. But whenever I was younger, I liked video games a lot, bro. Yeah. Halo was the top game of all time for me. Goldeneye for the N64. Did I go back? Like I'm a little bit. Older I, I played a lot of Nintendo 64. I didn't play that game though. I ain't gonna lie. But like Mario 007 3 was my shit. Which one? Mario three was my shit. Yeah. Yeah. 007. Yeah. Goldeneye. Was, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Maybe uh -huh. I did play that one. That then, was like bro. the the OG like first person shooter. Like, yes, yeah. bro. That shit yeah. used to go hard. Hard. Bro. <laughs> and that's funny that you say that like about like just being so obsessed that you were like bloodshot, bro. I remember my little cousin, bro. He he's still a gamer to this day. But back then, whenever he was a kid, oh my gosh, dude, the kid was diehard gamer and this kid i remember one day he's sitting there playing the game and he's like doing all this it just keeps moving moving, moving. gotta pee and i'm like <laughs> i'm like what are you doing and he's like i gotta pee and i'm like yep. bro if you don't put that game down and go pee bro, <laughs> bro i've known legit like kids that had bottles in their room and they piss in like gatorade bottles because yeah. they couldn't stop playing just won't stop playing multiplayer bro. online you know you can right? just pause it yeah that's crazy bro which that that kind of had me um talk about that, that kind of reminds me of some of the uh, topics that I have for you. So we're kind of going to get off topic a little bit here. But what was it like, bro? Like, you are someone that has went through that whole entire stage. Like, you went through, like, when there was no internet, you know, to where pretty much, like, whenever the first computer started coming out. And now till today, like, with all the stuff that we have, like, talk about, like, how – you know how how far we've came in advancement you know you just I mean? dated me before the internet bro. i'm just gonna walk <laughs> off like i'm not 80 years old what, what's uh, that, when did the eight internet come out like i don't know 
Al Gore invented the internet in like well, 93 and, or something. Yeah, right? I think it was in like the yeah, 80s or whatever. Yeah, no. But the, I think uh, it became like you're popular right, you're to right. the I'm internet. I'm giving you shit. Public, but like yeah. my family legit, I think in Collinsville, we were like one of the first families that had internet out really? there. And dude, I was hustling as a kid in like middle school. Yeah. After I got my first like CD burner, I was yeah. selling like burnt CDs, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Just like hustling that stuff because right. nobody else had the internet and yeah like, how'd you get all this music like right it's out in collinsville you know it's like damn the internet it's i don't know it's like horse and buggy town yeah. almost <laughs> <laughs> like, real real. <laughs> they probably still be riding chariots i think they do <laughs> they got their first car like two years ago <laughs> damn bro collinsville people are about to roast me now bro <laughs> yeah, they're gonna no, they're hate gonna... this pod bro yeah. they can turn it off never watching it again <laughs> That is funny, bro. So anyway, man, I'm gonna get back to the to the to the topics at hand. You know, so back to like the vintage and stuff. Like, also, you know, like do you a lot of this stuff now that a lot of people are liking are like from like the '90s and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of like would you say it's kind of more where the most popular vintage pieces like stuff from the '90s or yeah, what I era? Mean, here it all depends on your market. You know, right. like Oklahoma City, they're pushing a lot of true vintage and stuff like that. I personally don't care about it as, uh-huh. as a '90s kid. You know, as a teenager in the '90s. Slipknot, corn, like yeah. all those band T-shirts is what I had as a yeah. kid, and that's that's what I love. It kind of reminds me of just being a kid and all that. So yeah, it's it's the most popular thing we sell here for right. sure. Ninety stuff, yeah, hundred percent. And that was gonna be my question. Like, do you remember kind of having some of those tees and stuff? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. probably not even thinking nothing of it. Like, mm-hmm. this is just a T-shirt that I just like. I think it's cool. I like the band. I'm gonna rock it. Mm-hmm. And now here we are, twenty, thirty years later, and it's like. 60 70 80 100 200 Mm -hmm. shirt even more you know like talk about that a little bit like just kind of seeing that go from being just a regular t-shirt to yeah a vintage piece like i said like i had you know i was into all that new metal stuff corn lint biscuit all that i had slipknot shirts i had corn shirts when i first opened the store actually shortly before i opened the store i was doing pop-ups and all that yeah i went back to my mom's house just to see if there was anything in the closet in my old room and i'm like Corn, 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 Slipknot, Limp Biscuit. Wow. I still have probably four or five shirts that I wore in high school. Wow. And, you know, 90s kids, we were wearing, like, and it's back now, but, yeah. like, oversized stuff. I, gra- I graduated high school weighing, like, 120 pounds, and yeah. I was wearing extra large T-shirts. Right. You know, like, like <laughs> yeah, that is true. And, like, I mean, luckily, like, I mean, we're, we are, like, uh, in a baggy kind of, mm-hmm. you know, era right now, but it's not like that early 2000s, late 90s baggy where it's, like, you got three, four X white tees, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, For sure, yeah, and the Jinkos, that's when Jinkos came out. Yeah. Kids were coming to school wearing Jinkos that are, like, each leg's as big around as a trash can. You Bro, know? that's You're crazy. smuggling fruit across the border with those right. jeans? What are you doing? <laughs> Huge clothes in the 90s. So, like, that was, like, kind of, like, what the clothing scene was, like, back then and stuff. But, like, what, like, did they have vintage stuff back then, too? Like, was was there a scene for vintage at, at all? Um, We started messing around in high school with, like, going to the thrift stores and finding, like, vintage like nature t-shirts and, and okay. kind of wearing them ironically yeah you, know, yeah you buy it for 50 cents and mm-hmm. it's got a big goofy moose or mm-hmm. elk or whatever deer yeah you know so yeah i mean we were messing with like you know old 80s nature tees and yeah. stuff in the in the late 90s but then it was 2000s. just kind of more like something fun to do like yeah. not really anything like serious or yeah. anything yeah i don't want to act like like our generation or the current vintage scene invented vintage cause, right you know in high school there was a there's a girl out here, Kristen, that owned uh, Cheap Thrills Vintage, uh-huh. and we used to go there every once in a while. She'd have, like, old band tees from the 70s mm. and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been popular. It's just COVID blew it up, man. Yeah, Everyone man. Everyone knows COVID blew it Cause, up. like, I heard about Vintage a little bit, you know, but tiny bits. And like you said, it's probably, like, those type of, like, Cheap Thrills type of vintage that you just see, you know, kind of mm-hmm. passing the, on the roads, but, like, around that same time where, like, COVID and stuff, like, it just became crazy oh, and, yeah. like... I even kind of got into it a whole lot, and I'm like, I mean, you guys see I'm rocking the vintage today, but it's just like, bro, it just, you're right, bro, it, like, it's easy to be consumed in it, you know, like, mm-hmm. every time now when I go to events and stuff, like, because the good thing about vintage is you can pick up a dope shirt for 40, 50 bucks, yeah. you know, where, like, your shoes, you know, you're not, it's hard to get a pair of shoes for less than $200, you know, a good pair of shoes, so. It became, like, easy for me to go to these events and, like, instead of buying a shoe at every event, you know, it's like, oh, I can at least get a vintage tee, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean, and, like, go home with something, you know, that, like, oh, I got this from this event or I got that from that event, so... Yeah. That's a that's that's the cool thing about vintage, you know. It, and it kind of allows you to tie 
a memory to a cl- sure. piece of clothing, you know? Yeah, the nostalgia is why it's yeah why it's special, man. Right. People come in here, we you know our our bread and butter is like high school kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. but we'll have you know. 50 60 year old guy or woman or whatever come in with their kids or grandkids even and they start looking at the band tees and they've always got stories They're, oh i saw them in 85 yeah. and it's right. like go off let's hear Dude, it yeah bro same thing with the shoes at, yeah. at the at the shop man whenever people come in there all the time they're like Man, this is so crazy, man. I used to have these back in 88 when I was a kid. Or I used to have those, those, those. It's funny, though, whenever they point out something that's like a new release that, mm-hmm. like, never came out back then. They're like, I used to have those. And I'm like, bro, those came yeah. out last year. <laughs> that's just funny. But uh, what was life like for you back in those days, man? Like, what was a young Sean doing in, like, 97? You know, that's the year I was born, you know. So, like, what was kind of life like for you? growing up you so you grew up in collinsville right or where yeah uh 97 i would have been like four 13 14 years old uh Uh, no cars back then you know horse and buggy. no we were uh too young to have our driver's license we pretty much just like ran around downtown collinsville just like causing chaos yeah and we're sneaking into our girlfriend's windows yeah just all all that stupid stuff and then yeah playing video games you got any crazy stories about sneaking in girls windows because i got a crazy story about sneaking in girls windows i'm not super crazy i mean my crazy my girlfriend in high school is on the second floor and we Uh, like just figuring out how to like climb up the the like carport and then get up on the roof and then i guess one time her dad kind of thought or figured something out and, and tried coming up the stairs or whatever and i had to like jump off the roof but nothing nothing crazy nothing too crazy nothing too crazy bro one time bro i was and this is the messed up part bro i wasn't even going out there for like the girl like i was just young i was with my buddy and he was like oh i'm gonna go out to this girl's house do you want to go with me and i'm like yeah sure he's like yeah we're gonna drink a little smoke a little so i'm like chill i'm, I'm down you know what i'm saying let's go so we get to riding bikes out there and it's way out in the country bro yeah we're riding bikes out there it's in south coffeeville oklahoma and we're riding we're riding we get kind of close to the area and he's like uh he goes oh he goes here in about a block or so he's like there's this house and they've got two big dogs bro like they're mean dogs bro he's like sometimes they're on chains sometimes they're not you know what i mean like if they're not on chains be ready to go <laughs> and i'm just like god damn i'm like all right you know i'm ready so we go by bro we go there and, like, we get past the house, and here comes the dogs. Like, you can hear them, bro. They sound mean, like rabie-infested type dogs, bro. They're on chains. You know what I mean? It's all good. We're like, oh, okay, thank God. So we go out there. We hang out. We come back, bro. This time we're not even thinking about it because last time they were on chains, we went out there at 10 o'clock at night. You know what I mean? Coming back at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, they should still be on chains, right? No, bro. The same thing, bro. The dogs come running at us, bro. This time they're not on chains, bro. <laughs> and my homie is just like, go, go, go. They're not on chains. <laughs> we just start pedaling, bro. And I am like, these dogs are on our heels, bro. You just like, you look back and you could just see them. Big old nasty teeth, bro. Just rawr, rawr, rawr. And my freaking homie's chain pops, bro. Mm-mm. His freaking chain pops, bro. I don't know why, bro, but like, luckily, like, his at the time that his chain popped, like, he did get bit by the dog, like, on his ankle a little bit. It just kind of barely got him, though. But like, right at that same time, like, the dogs like kind of stopped and like turned around, bro. I didn't out. stop, bro. <laughs> I kept going, bro. You just ditched the homie. Laugh, just left bro. him. I'm not about to get mauled by dogs. Mm-mm, no. <laughs> I'm not getting mauled by dogs Mm-mm. in South Coffeeville, Oklahoma, no sense bro. sense both of you getting mauled. Bro, I'm the only right? black kid here, bro. That's a hate crime if I get mauled by dogs, man. Like, I'm getting out of here, man. Man, I guess there was a time uh, it was snowing, and I left my girlfriend's house at, like, probably, like, 1 30 in the morning something like that yeah and i remember i'm driving it's real icy and everything and this is kind of an embarrassing story but it, but it's cool <laughs> i uh i'm like man i have to pee like yeah. so bad and i'm driving and i'm having to go all slow because there's ice everywhere i'm like i'm i'm not i'm not gonna make it and there's a church up here and i thought like oh big open parking lot all that i'm gonna just pull over and pee and i remember thinking like is peeing on the side of a church like is that kosher with the lord or whatever bro, i would definitely think the same thing like hey, <laughs> yeah, am i gonna bro. get in trouble for this and so can this keep me out of heaven <laughs> long story short it's not kosher i found that out the hard way but i uh, i pull over and i hop out of my car and i'm unbuttoning my pants and everything and next thing i know i wake up i slipped on the ice hit my head knocked me out 
pissed all over my pants <laughs> and then woke up and like had like this like pee slushy in my <laughs> pants going on like what the hell just happened and so yeah don't don't pee out and all don't pee on church bro yeah. i really that's messed up maybe yeah, that right? was god right like, telling yeah, you like, to be. don't to be. pee on my ground Mm-mm. that's <laughs> yeah <dude. laughs> oh my gosh man so like so you've lived now like you were born in what year were you born if 83. you don't mind telling people 83 so you lived in the 80s the 90s early 2000s the 10 the tens what decade like do you think was the most popping Man, it's hard to say because like the '80s probably, yeah. but, I but you didn't really know, get to grow. Like, like you were probably like a little kid, yeah, and shit like that. Right. But it seems like the '80s would have been cracked, like popping. Billy Idol and David Bowie, like yeah, all that. But I mean, for me, teenage years, of course, the '90s were dope, and then yeah. you know, I turned 21 and you know, started drinking at like 24 and everything. So the 2000s were like funnest time for me the fun times yeah i don't know man I, i'd probably say late 90s just everything was popping off and yeah the internet was like fairly new right. and people are figuring out how to connect and right yeah. now we're spoiled with that i mean yeah. you can you know real, it's on bro. your phone you can dude now it's to the pocket, point where people but... live on the internet like oh yeah i mean especially like with the metaverse and stuff bro like people are literally becoming so consumed with the internet that like they spend not only do they spend more time on the internet but they have a whole nother life that's not even them, bro. Like they're not even going by their real name. Like mm-hmm. you know, they're a totally different person in real life. They're you know what I'm saying five eight, three hundred and fifty pound, you know what I'm saying chode mm-hmm. that lives at home with his parents. You know what I mean? But in the metaverse, he's six six. You know what I'm saying? Chiseled two fifty. You know what I mean? Like got all the girls a millionaire. You know it's crazy that like, not. I mean it's it's cool that it's came that far that <clears throat> we're able to like. Maybe, you know, use it to our advantage and, like, use it to see, like, this is what your life could be, you know what I mean, if you got up and done something with yourself. But it's, like, instead people are taking it to the point where it's, yeah. like, they're just immersing themselves into this fake life that's not even real. Well, for every every technology, every piece of technology that you can do something great with, there's a thousand people doing something, something stupid bad with, with it. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. And we've but. talked about that a lot here on the pod, too, like, especially with AI being so mm, big right now. I and stuff. Don't even, I'm an AI conspiracy theorist. A like bit, what, bro? bro? What do you think? Bro? I, I'm, man, I'm just going to sound crazy and stupid on your pod, but <laughs> I'm 100% convinced that there's, like, AI people already, like, dude, like, walking around just integrating, man. Bro, I don't want to, I'm not going to throw no names out there. But, bro, there is – I'm just going to say this. There's a group of resellers here in Tulsa, bro. They're AI people, bro. They are AI robots, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you who they are after we get I up. I already know. <laughs> probably by the voices. It's, it's like, yeah, bro. Like, homie – one of the homies has, like, the deepest voice. I, I died. <laughs> yeah, I said something to him the other day. He came in. I was like, bro, every time I hear your voice, it bro. Like, freaks me. I turn around thinking you're going to be some, like – Six eight monster Dude, and you're just so robots, bro. Mm-hmm. Robots, yeah. bro. <laughs> I be joking with my girl all the time. Like every time I'm like, yeah, I seen the robots today. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Like yeah, they're not cool. nicest, like yeah. well mannered, courteous, very well, like, yeah, like, amazing yeah. people. Yeah, but, but definitely they robots. Could be AI. I'll ask them. They'll yeah, tell me. Dude, ask them for me, bro. Tell you me. can honestly tell them. Like Jay asked, like, yeah, no. are, y- are y'all robots? Yeah. I was telling no more steals until you admit you're AI, bro. <laughs> admit it, bro. Yeah. Admit it right <laughs> yeah. here, right now. Mm-hmm. And film it, too, so I can drop it I in the pot. Fil- they won't let me film it. They'll probably, like, fry my phone or That's something. That's true, bro. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Damn, bro. I'm loving this pot already, bro. <laughs> no, just... In Dallas, JCB and I, uh, Jacob, shoe yeah. guy, uh, we were driving around. We went to a couple vintage stores and some sneaker stores and stuff. Yeah. And we saw this homeless dude, uh-huh. right? And then we're way down the miles down the road and see this dude. And I'm like, that guy's got the same jar, the same, every, that's the same. It's gotta be the same dude. And then we were driving somewhere else. I saw a guy that looked just like him again. And I was like, Jake, this is what I'm talking about. Jake. Like, this is the AI homeless people. Dude, like, no spying doubt, or something. Bro. like, I'm and kidding. Like, of course, I'm not that deep into it, but <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Bro, it really it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise bro. me. Dude. I think honestly, bro, like with the advancement of AI, bro, if if the public advancement is as far as it is now, the secret advancement has got to be way. That's beyond what it. I'm saying. Bro. It's got to be way That's behind it, bro. Saying. Because they don't they don't give it to the public. What they don't, you know, what I'm saying, haven't known for years. You know what I mean? Like, so if if it's as advanced as it is now, bro, 
It would not surprise me, bro. 100% honest, and I'm not even a big conspiracy theorist like that. It wouldn't surprise me if some shit came out and they found out that people were human. Like, humans were AIs. Really wouldn't, bro. You ever check out, like, the, uh, what is it, like, uh, Birds Aren't Real website or whatever? No, but I have seen a lot of people talking about, like, the pigeons and stuff like that. it's so funny. Dude, that shit is funny, bro. They, like, say they're, like... Secret government agents and shit like Just that. Spying on people. That's yeah. why they land on the power lines to recharge and all that bro, shit. shit's hilarious. It wouldn't surprise me, bro. There's some weird shit out there, man. So uh growing up, like I guess you didn't really do too much. I mean, you grew up in the eighties, but you were so young and stuff. So you probably do you even remember like when the first Jordans and stuff were released? You were probably only like what one? I man, guess. I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. I told you earlier. Like, yeah, I'm not a shoe person. I I can say like my first memories because we grew up pretty poor. Like my my dad kind of skipped out when I was like four or whatever. Gotcha. Uh, my mom worked a Walmart job. Did like you know the best she could. Yeah. Mad respect to my mom. Right. Uh, stayed a lot with my grandparents. And all that. My f- early memories of of Jordans are like us going down to Dallas to to see my grandparents and stuff. And, and getting the, the fake Jordans from Trader's Village. Like, there you go. I discovered Trader's Village yeah. as, like, a little kid, and that place is popping off Dude, now. it is, bro. It's still popping now oh, to this oh, day, yeah. bro. Yeah, they got, like, crazy, like, vintage stores in, in Trader's Village. Really? And, like, I haven't been in a long time. Legit sneaker stores in Trader's like, Village. It's, yeah, dude, I'll have to oh, check it out It's time. worth it. But, no, I, I mean, my mom did work hard and got, like, uh, she'd get me some real stuff, but mm-hmm. I, we had the fake stuff, too, like, honestly, yeah. but... But I, I don't remember my first pair. I couldn't tell you what they were. For your first pair. My my youngest memory of one of my favorite shoes would be like the Ken Griffey Juniors with like the Velcro strap. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the Kamikaze, the Sean Kemp's. I don't know those with ones. The I do crazy, know the Griffey, like, though. Yeah, we can look them up later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a show dope shoe. They re-released them like six, eight months ago, something really? like that, I think. Yeah. They release so much shit, bro. It's hard to keep up. I think with those it, you were know? Reeboks, maybe. Oh, yeah. And, like, that stuff, like, I have no ties to it nostalgically, so, like, I don't keep up with it. You know, like, the pennies or, like, whenever those come back, everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, pennies, pennies, pennies. But I'm like, I don't give a damn about them damn yeah. things. Like, I don't care. I don't, I don't remember these, you know what I mean? So, bro, My mom has pictures. She sent me pictures of me as a little kid. With like the all over print uh, Magic Johnson t shirt, like yeah. stuff like some crazy heat. crazy heat. Yeah. Damn. You know, I was a little kid, but it was like ten, fifteen bucks back then. Right. You just know? regular old t shirt. Mm hmm. Just all the Jordan stuff and all that. Yeah. So. That's crazy, man. So like what were you interested in whenever you were a kid? Like what what kind of made you tick, you know, besides like was it just all like the computer graphics and, and games and stuff or what else did you like to do? That's what I was huge into was, mm-hmm. was computers and um and web design and graphic design and yeah. stuff like that. And back then, yeah, computers being so new and everything, my mom I really wanted to pursue that and my mom, you know, wanted the best for me and looking at or whatever, really thought that if I pursue like graphic design, something computer related, she's like, you have to move to New York or like a big city to do this. And then, so I kind of switched and just kind of honestly fumbled through life for a while. But yeah, but yeah, that was my biggest interest as a kid was graphic design. I was, I was obsessed with it. Graphic web design and stuff like that. That, that was like, that's crazy now. Like thinking, looking back on it now, it's like, damn, like I should have, you know Big what I mean? Like, yeah. But I mean, it's, with all this stuff, like the clothes, the shoes, the graphic, the internet, we never knew that like, it was going to be what it is now. You know yeah, what I mean? No. Like who, you know, there's only so many amount of people that know that. And the people that know that already have inside information because they're the ones that are doing AI for years. You know what I mean? So they're way ahead, you know, and they mm-hmm. already know to put, you know what I'm saying? Their money and their time and whatever in this stuff. But, No, but realistically, though, for real, like, just so many people just don't know, you know what I mean? Like, and there's no way to know, you know, that's the crazy thing. Like, hindsight's 2020. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, how is what you're doing now different than what you imagined you'd be doing as a kid? Well, what's funny about that is even though I thought, like, graphic design and all that, this has been something I wanted to do since I was a teenager. Like really? I, I always had this silly dream of owning a clothing store yeah. from the top, probably 12, 13, maybe 14 years really? old. I always wanted to do yeah. it. So right now I can say that I'm doing almost exactly what I envisioned myself doing at like 13. I really just kind of lost that vision. You know, yeah. everyone's like, 
you know, you go to high school or whatever, you know, guidance counselors, which are a total joke. Yeah. You know, you need to do this. You need to learn yeah. a trade. You need to do th- I want to start a clothing store. No, that's stupid. You can't do that. Do this, do this, do this. And, right. you know, I, I spent three decades of my life not doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. I started what this. kind of stuff did you do before? Uh, my first job was Reesers. I worked there all through high school, and after then I uh, I joined uh, the Air Force Reserves. Oh, okay. And I got a job at Home Depot yeah. and worked there for seven years. Uh, worked at Lowe's for eight years. Yeah. Like pretty much home improvement, pretty much was my yeah. my last job that I quit to do this full time. Yeah. Was a uh, uh, selling bath remodels for a local company. Gotcha. But it's just not i mean it's rewarding you get people you know their house is their kingdom yeah. you know your home's your kingdom right helping people maintain that and improve it and that's a dream in itself like it was rewarding to a to an extent but yeah. it wasn't where my heart was well, exactly and i was doing pop-ups and and some form of clothing hustle yeah. almost my entire life right like as a side gig yeah so. yeah and i've kind of been the same way too bro like I'm kind of where, like, I can say that, like, right now I'm doing, you know, in a form, something that I wanted to do as a kid. Because for me, like, sitting there watching Disney Channel, watching Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and all those shows, like, I'm like, I want to be on TV. Like, that would be so cool to be able to be in these TV shows and stuff, you know. And so, like, now I'm not, like, on a TV show or anything, but, like. In a sense, I'm still on TV. You, you know, what I mean, you're you can on watch. Stream, bro. Yeah, dude, you can watch. You can watch uh, YouTube right on your TV. So. I'll be posting sometimes. I'll like take a picture of me on T on YouTube. I like play my video and I'll post it. I'll be like, "Mama, I'm on TV." <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's dope. funny. That's bro. Dope. <laughs> Love it. But uh, so let's get into like the racks. Like, how did you come up with the you know the racks? How did this come to be? Um, I guess it goes way back to like that kind of dream and the graphic design thing. I, yeah. I was doing graphic design and I started making uh like t-shirt designs for like local bands and traveling bands okay. and, and people like that. And uh, I just asked him like, Hey, when you get this printed, will you send me one? Yeah. And I, I collected those, you know, and, and when I talk about it, it's almost narcissistic. Like yeah. I, I, I collected my own t-shirts that I designed, <laughs> you know, but yeah. I just wanted it as like a memory, a souvenir or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then just needing more inspiration for the designs and everything. I can't just go to hot topic, look at other band tees and, copy that right guess you can but i started going to thrift stores my buddy jeffrey like i said he used to mm-hmm. go and buy like ironically the shirt with a moose on it and everything yeah so he's like J- dude just go to the thrift store and look at all the goofy weird stuff that you yeah. see because it's everything right and i so i started just picking up shirts at the thrift store for more inspiration and it just piled into this again obsession over t-shirts and yeah. t-shirt designs and I started designing like kind of my own brands with friends, stuff like that. And then I just realized like, I'm, I'm drawing inspiration from all this old stuff. Yeah. Maybe the old stuff's really just what I like. Yeah. And so I started just collecting vintage and then it, it became like hoarding vintage. Mm-hmm. And then, so I was like, I gotta sell some of this, get rid of this, or I'm going to be one of those people on TV. So I started selling <laughs> Dude, it, started doing right. I'd love <laughs> hoarder shows oh like, dude me too we watch it all the time we bro. can talk about that for hours that's a whole nother podcast <laughs> right bro. uh but uh yeah i started like trading to get i'd go to the thrift store and find something sick but it'd yeah. be like a size small or medium or whatever yeah so i started picking it up trading selling started doing pop-ups i found out about like uh, some flea markets that were kind of hip and all that started doing pop-ups and then i would just anything i do i just like I just pour my, I, I obsess over it and I just yeah. pour myself into it. And so I was doing these elaborate setups to where people, everyone was like, dude, when are you going to start a store? When are you going to, and I just started hearing it and hearing it, hearing yeah. it. And I'm like, man, this is the dream I had when I was a kid. And now people are asking me to, to do, do it. it. Yeah. And I kind of have goosebumps talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. But like people want me to do it. Yeah. They want me to live my dream. Right. And that, that was nuts. And so yeah. I was like, I, I actually met Davis at a, a, a pop-up that was just a total bomb yeah and uh we hung out one day and that day and we i think we were just drinking and smoking and whatever we weren't even hardly selling anything there's no right. one coming to it and i was like man i'm thinking about starting the store yada 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 and i found this just 
you know, dump of a spot. You've been to our, our old the, spot. Yeah, the original right? location. Just little yeah. hole in the wall. You yeah. Know, closet. Yeah. Moldy closet. But you made it work, though. Yeah, we made it work, Yeah, you man. made that shit work. I had a vision, and yeah. I was like, we're going to accomplish the vision, you know? Yeah. And uh, Davis was like, yeah, I'll help, whatever. And I had a couple people. Noah was helping. Uh, uh, Matt, big body, came down and helped clean and, mm-hmm. and junk like that. And we opened it doing, you know, a couple two or three days a week the original intent was more of like a weekend showroom type thing got you it just snowballed from there yeah. man into a, this is kind of a monster at this right. point honestly yeah so. man and kudos to you for that man because you know a lot of people have a lot of dreams but a lot of people just are a little bit too scared to go for it you know they don't want to risk you know the security that they have to go for the dream that they have so kudos to you for you know taking that step out there and actually chasing that dream what do you think gave you that bravery to like actually do it you think what do you think it was the people that were like kind of putting you in the ear when are you going to do this when are you going to do this that kind of gave you that bravery or what do you think gave you yeah that? for sure it, it was a combination of a few things it was yeah all the people like man you can do it you can do it you have yeah. such great stuff you have so much stuff blah blah yeah. blah and just people pushing right and uh that and just a combination of, of I'm not gonna lie, man, like depression mm-hmm. and just doing something that I was like, I don't like this. Yeah. I don't like what I do. Yeah, this does dude. not fulfill me. Dude, that's so real, bro. And I I just I like I said, we found that little kind of shithole, if we're being honest, and it was cheap enough that I was like pretty low risk. Yeah. It only I mean, we opened it with course i had my hoard of clothes but i opened that thing with less than 10k yeah. you know and um i felt like davis was kind of the same way he wasn't happy doing what he was doing i was like man maybe i can put someone on mm-hmm. as, you know and and it just kind of i just there. pulled the trigger man yeah. and it was there were times it was scary it was like yeah. this isn't gonna work it's yeah this is, this was stupid yeah but i never had a ton into it so i, right. I wouldn't have been totally screwed if it failed if it did fail yeah that would have been heartbroken but exactly yeah and we'll come back to this but i do kind of want to get off a little bit just you know from you talking about um like being depressed and stuff you know because that is so real bro like a lot of times a lot of these people out there they're like they don't know why they're depressed they don't know why they're sad and like a lot of it could stem from you know like what you do on a daily basis. I mean, I know for a while there, like I used to work at Walmart distribution, like when I first moved out on my own and stuff, I was probably like 19, 20 years old. That job made me depressed, bro. Like it seriously did. And I ended up going back like not that long ago, you know, just like six months ago, I was working there again, you know? And like, I was starting to get to that point again where I'm like, dude, like I'm starting to lose it. You know what I mean? Like I hate this job so much. And like, there was a time, you know, in my life, bro, where like, I would get off work, I'd come home, bro, I'd pretty much chill, I'd go to sleep, wake up, do it again. Like, I wasn't even showering, you know what I mean? I was showering, like, once or twice a week, you know, just because I just didn't really feel like it, you know? And, like, I never really knew that it was depression because, like, for us, you know, especially in, like, a black household, you know what I mean? Like, mental issues like that just aren't really discussed. We never talked about being depressed. You can't be depressed, Uh you know what I mean? There wasn't no, what are you depressed Mm -hmm. about? You know what I mean? Like, you got toys, you got this, you got... You ain't nothing to be depressed about, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, even though I probably was even depressed as a kid because, you know, I struggled with, like, my mom. She was, you know, a drug addict and in and out of the house going to prison and stuff. My dad was never around. So there was plenty of things for me to be depressed about. But in their eyes, you know what I'm saying, like, there's nothing for you to be depressed about, you know? And, yeah. and honestly, as a kid, I don't really think I really felt like I didn't really have to deal with that a lot, you know what I mean? But growing up, you know, there was times, like, I probably was depressed and I didn't even realize it because it was oh, yeah. just never talked about, you know, oh. but I, I'm, I, it's, it's good now that like people are more open to talking about it, you know, just, oh, no, for sure. it's like a casual conversation, you know, and that's what it should be, you know, a, ca- a casual conversation because it's real and people struggle with it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So, but anyway, um, back to the racks and stuff, like what was that first location? How do you think that helped you grow? Or helped you become, you know, into the monster, like you said, you know, it's it's became now. Well, of course, it was a it was a a stepping stone. I, I also feel like um, we had to be on our A game. Uh-huh. You know, when you're in a spot where there's no traffic over there, there's no legitimate sign. Yeah, dude, we 
no windows, yeah. bro. Like nobody knew what Nobody's was going on. Nobody's coming there unless they know they're coming so there. So if someone comes in there, your customer service has to be on point, your attitude has to be on everything has to be on point yeah. because they're already like, This is in the hood. Like yeah. am I about to get cut by one of these weird people? <laughs> like, what's going yeah. on here? Yeah. You know? So it I think it just sharpened us that we yeah. knew what like we have to execute every day at a hundred percent. I think it was probably the biggest takeaway. I think the second takeaway was just a sense of being able to help people and give advice. Right. Cause I, I feel like a lot of, you know, I, I finally pulled my, the trigger on my dream, like fairly late in life, mm-hmm. you know, in, in late thirties, but it's really like a lot of younger cats. I mean, that have, that have opened stores. I know, how many people have opened vintage stores now in Oklahoma since we opened the racks, right. dude? And every one of them talks to me in some form yeah. for the most part yeah. before they do it. And I tell them all, I'm like, bro, if the racks made it in that spot, you can do it, yeah. man. And if yeah. you don't do it, big deal. Like, yeah. big deal. Go yeah. do something else. Right. But I think that it's just like a – I think that that store – I may be giving myself too much credit or us too much credit, but I think that store helped a lot of these kids see that like we can do this shit because if that, if that crappy location can survive and I have this, you know, cool brick and mortar with open windows and traffic and all this, surely I can do it. Right. Do you think that that, that original location, do you think that that would have like had the same success? Like say you open that thing today with all the other stores that are out there or do you think that that like success kind of contributed to y'all kind of being some of like the first ones, maybe not like the pioneers. I'm sure there was maybe other people in the area that maybe had, but like y'all were kind of one of the first ones that really started making like a big name and started carrying a lot of the stuff that people are looking for nowadays. Yeah. We were, I'm certain we were the OG like in Tulsa, yeah. the OG like t-shirt heavy vintage store. Right. You know, there were some other vintage stores and they carry female stuff and all that yeah. and you're like no we're just gonna blast you with the dopest t-shirts the you've dopest, ever seen. yeah um i don't know man I, th- I think i i think i think that location being such a if you know you know type thing yeah would succeed no matter what yeah just because the curiosity that is, is what true. made it like, that is true yeah like people are like where'd you get that oh there's a spot like you're probably not gonna be able to find it yeah do i mean we'd have people calling us from outside the front door like i don't know if i'm here or not <laughs> go outside like, they're right there yeah the we <laughs> open the door and they're right there on the phone like that's so funny. i i think that that i think it it helped in a weird way and like and a, you know it's almost exclusive. it was almost kind of like a speakeasy you know it like was. bro because i remember the first time i pulled up same kind of thoughts like mm-hmm. Where am I at right yeah. now? No. Like, babe, lock the car. You know what I mean? We get, we go in, and then you open the door, bro, and it's just like vintage heaven. The reaction was the same from yeah. almost everybody. Yeah. They open the door, and they're kind of like almost hunched over. Like <laughs> yeah. Here, and they open the door, and their eyes, they're just, wow. Whoa. And yeah. Wow. So many people would say wow. Right. And it was just nuts just being in that little closet, man. Yeah. What was your original expectation for that store? I don't know that I had a whole lot of expectations for it. I was like, I can make just enough money to quit my job and not have to work for some dick. Then I'm good. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, if we could make 10 grand here a month, you know, and three grand is profit. I can like live. Yeah. I'd rather live and be poor than I, I was at that point where I'm like, I'd rather live and be poor than to do something I hate and have a decent amount of money like right. honestly so yeah my expectations were low i just knew that i hated where i was at and we i wanted needed to change do whatever i could to change yeah. it i feel that too because i was kind of in that same spot you know doing a whole bunch of work and I've, I've done so many jobs bro like i'm a whole certified welder bro like i yeah. have a whole welding certification bro i mean it's expired now but like i went to school for it and everything bro but like i started getting out there bro and working and i'm just like realizing bro like i hate this this is not fun. Like, it's decent money, but this is not fun. Like, and just thinking about the thing that really kills me is when I'm at work and I'm, like, I'm hating the day and all I can think about is the next 40 years. Like, I got to hate this day mm-hmm. for 40 years? No way. No. I can't. I can't do it anymore, you know? You so, need to do it. Yeah, bro. Like, I'm I'm grateful. That, like, I, I'm 
very upset that I didn't like pursue these things earlier because had I started, you know, all this when I was 21, you know, maybe by now, you know, I may be in a better position, but I'm just like, man, I'm just glad that I at least can try now while I'm still young. And, you know, if it, like you said, if it doesn't work out, so what, you know what I mean? You can go back, you know, there's something I can fall back on, but I would be remiss if I was 50 years old and I look back and I said, man, I never even tried. Mm hmm. I yeah, never you even have to try. try. And what you said was key, though, because, like, you say that, you know, you regret not starting earlier. Mm -hmm. But had you started earlier, you wouldn't have the appreciation that you have for it now. That's so true. So, you know, you're like, I could be doing this shit. Yeah. Like, oh, and I hated that. So yeah. So, now I get to do what I love. Yeah, exactly. And that that is very true because that was another thing about me. When I first started working, bro, like, I finally was, when I first got out there on my own, there was no one to wake me up and say, hey, you need to be at work. You know what I mean? There was no one that, like, if I stayed home from school, it was going to be like, why the hell are you home from school? There was no one to do that. So it was like, I, whenever I woke up and I didn't want to go to work, I'm sick. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If I if I had friends that were hanging out, I'm sick, you know? And it, like, it kind of got me in that where I didn't respect my job. I didn't care about it. You know what I mean? I, I thought that, like, I thought you could pretty much skate through life and then, now here I am, 26, like, I mean, you can't skate through life, but it just ain't very fun. Yeah. It ain't very fun just skating through life, you know, especially when you're doing things that you don't really like doing, you know. Right. I Like you said, I'd much rather skate through life doing something that I love and barely making it by mm -hmm. than skate through life freaking giving 40 hours to some dickhead yeah. every week. And the key is to give it your all yeah. and blow it up so you right. can live a lavish life doing what you love. There you go. There you go. And That's the key, way. man. So... How did how do you think reality right now in today's time has either failed or exceeded? I mean, I know you said you didn't really have a whole lot of expectations, but at least what you thought was going to happen. How do you think that has either failed or exceeded that? Um, well, I mean, we we went from I said, you know, if we could do ten grand and I end up with three thousand profit or whatever. Yeah. We we in a matter of you know, in a matter of time, we were crushing yeah. that expectation. Right. And now it's just like, if I made 10 grand next month, I'd cry. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> so the, I mean, I, I guess I had very vague, like this would be great or whatever kind of expectations, yeah. but, but any goal that I set, my team crushes. Yeah. If I, if I tell them we need to do something, even if there's a little like, that's dumb or whatever and we have to have a little talk sometimes i i forget that you need a some people need explanation for yeah. why things yeah. need to be done i'm one of those people too i yeah. i like to be ex like why you know yeah. and, and not too. only huh me too me yeah too. yeah not only just because like i always think my way is better but so, I, sometimes i truly want to learn you know what i'm saying like why are we doing it this way yeah. as opposed to the way that i think you know what i'm saying it should be done like explain to me you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. what's the purpose of doing yeah. this yeah and a lot of people take that managers take that the wrong way you're yeah. asking why i shouldn't have to explain my well you want to develop people and you want to grow people that's key to business, yeah. man. It's key to life. Right. Sometimes you have to explain yourself or yeah. explain why this needs to be done or what the expected outcome is. But right. We have a team now that just like we set a goal or I set a goal or we set goals together. We crush them, yeah. bro. It doesn't matter what yeah. it is. We can be like, we want to sell this many pieces. We want to make this much money. We want to move this many shoes. And if if they want to do it, it, it sometimes it takes a little motivation. Yeah. A lot of times it doesn't. They yeah. just want to do it. Right. Everyone here wants to be the best at what we do. Yeah. And so we just we crush every goal we set. Yeah. So. How important is it, do you think, uh, to the success of the Rags that your team has contributed? You know, because, uh, I mean, the success of anything big, you have to have a solid team. No mm -hmm. one man can do, you know what I'm saying, anything that is great. Nobody can do it alone. So how important do you think it has been um, and how instrumental do you think your team has been into growing this into the monster that – Oh, you know, it's yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I spent – so the first probably – I guess we're a little over two years old. The first 18 months was, was kind of rough because I was still working my full-time job. Gotcha. And, like, putting this together and, and using my team to, like, basically run it. Yeah. Um, And, and so I had to lean on them. And it, it was – it was rough at times because there's this, like, uh, dissension, I guess, or almost like – like resentment like well you're not even here and this and that yeah. i'm like man I, I i want it to succeed most businesses 
you know, fail within 18 months, 24 yeah. months. And as long as I can work my job, bringing home good money as a sales inside salesperson, yeah, I have financial backing to throw at the business and make sure it succeeds long term, not right. just short term. So having a, a a good team was just crucial. Yeah, it, it had to be. <laughs> right. I, like I said, I wasn't here for the longest time. Yeah, you know, I was here when I could be, but I was running myself ragged, man. Right. I was miserable, miserable yeah. working basically 65 70 80 hours a week <laughs> just killing myself that's hard sti- that's clean. hard shit right there yeah 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 so like back at the to the old location man what were some of your greatest memories at that location man because i know for me one of my greatest memories at that location was definitely that pop-up event that you guys did that we were just talking about before mm-hmm. we got started that was just so much fun man it was like the first time that you went to an event that although like it was like a non-professional vibe that you enjoyed. You know what I mean? Like, not in a bad way. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like you guys said, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to be an event where you're going to have the nice tables and all that stuff. You know what I mean? But it was one of my favorites because it felt like you was just kicking it with the boys, hanging out, and you still were able to make some money. Like, yeah. it's, that's the best. You know what I'm saying? I hate going to these big events that have the nice big building. They got the concession stand. They yeah. got everything you need. But it's boring. Yeah, it's, it's stale. Like There's nothing happening. Or something. Everybody's just walking around. It's quiet. You know, like that event was fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we had lots of fun. We had some drinks. We had, you know, what I'm saying a little bit of smoke and stuff. And it was just a good time. Like so, that was one of my favorite memories for me. What were some of your favorite memories? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Every block party we threw, yeah. and probably honestly, like. Uh, the one we did that was like Travis's birthday party where like Travis came from OKC or wherever the hell he was at at the time. And, uh, just all the homies came in from, yeah. I mean, we had people from Missouri, Kansas, Texas, yeah. OKC all here for this goofy block party that we did in, you know, dead end corner of downtown. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Every one of those were an absolute blast. Yeah. Um, one of them, I, I, I was, fairly inebriated and challenged a mat a big body into a wrestling uh-huh. match and just got waxed <laughs> oh, in the middle of, of, of the racks like in the in the the, the bottom floor whatever oh, okay you call yeah, it. yeah yeah it just it just whooped my ass <laughs> straight up uh that that was a good memory um tons of them man just yeah all right man so now it's time you know to kind of get into some of the some of the stuff that maybe some of the people came to see you know so um as most of us know, you know, you came to this new location with a partner. Um, so I just want to, you know, want to get kind of your your side of the story of, you know, maybe why that relationship, you know what I'm saying, ended up having to be severed. Um, you know, if, just give whatever you want to give. If you don't want to go into detail, you know what I'm saying, don't feel obligated. Just what do you say, you know what I'm saying, was kind of your side of things on on why that relationship worked. and. Um. Well, Travis came before we were here. Travis came probably, right. I don't know, maybe a a year in to the rack, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he wasn't in a great situation. You talked about it on your pod. So right. He wasn't in a great situation, and I've always had, like, a crazy amount of love for Travis. So Yeah. And, and the dude's a hustler, and, like, you know, like we talked about the obsession. Dude's yeah. obsessed with it. Right. Obsessed with it, right. you know? So I was like, that's kind of what I need is someone who's as obsessed with it as, as I are. am yeah. to, to come in. Um, but I think ultimately, probably the answer to your question is that obsession. Just both of us, just like that saying, like, you can't see the forest for the trees. You know, yeah. we're both just so obsessed with it that we're not even capable of expressing what our visions are to each to other, each other yeah. to the point where, or even comprehending each other's vision. Cause yeah. you know, you're so obsessed that like you want your vision, you know what I mean? Like I'm obsessed with this. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing, you know what I mean? This is my yeah. vision. And the other guy is like in the exact same energy. And I'm sure mm-hmm. that that's kind of, yeah. it's hard to, you know, map out and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Travis never happy in Tulsa. I mean, he doesn't really like know people here yeah. and, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, so that, that was almost inevitable that he would want to move back to the city and all that. Yeah. Um, but like I said, being, being at work all the time, mm-hmm. not being able to be here, it put so much pressure on him and Davis both. Yeah. And, and there, there was, 
there was uh, felt like a decent amount of like resentment there and, and it went both ways it was i wasn't here when he needed help yeah he got to do all the fun stuff and i'm stuck at work yeah you know so it was it was both it was him being mad at me for something i felt was good for the business. Yeah. Me being honestly kind of jealous of him living out my dream right. here in the store while yeah. I'm trying to financially back it elsewhere. Right. So it just, it wasn't anything. I don't feel like anything horrible. It right. was just, he, he needed, he's a, I, I said to Maddie, Travis is a, is a, a wild stallion and he needs his own field to run. Yeah. In, it's you right. know, and, yeah. and you know that about yeah. Travis. So, right. There's no, and, you know, sometimes that's just what it is, you know what I mean? I know a lot of people are probably waiting for some juicy, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he did it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But sometimes it's just some relationships, you know, just like uh, uh, like a partner relationship, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, you know, sometimes things just don't work out, you know? Sometimes people, you know, things may start good, you know, relationship may, you know, seem like it's going to, you know, be the best thing ever, but once things start getting in there, you know, it just may not be the best situation. And sometimes it's better for two people to split, you know what I'm saying, and do their own thing and to help them grow, you know what I mean? And I'm sure that you guys both learned a lot from that. What would you say you kind of learned from having that relationship and having that partner with you? Um, I don't know. That's, that's tough to, to draw a couple specifics. Yeah. Um, I definitely learned a lot, not that Travis got to benefit from it, but a lot of, about communication. And I think Davis is probably the person who benefited the most being yeah. here post Travis right. is I, I learned a lot more about just being open regardless of if it's going to hurt somebody's feelings yeah. or, or and listening, you yeah. know, just, you know, hear what people are saying. Don't just listen, listen, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's probably it. Probably the communication factor. Biggest thing, yeah. Is the the biggest takeaway from that. I think if Travis and I, I, I think we're both beasts at this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe had we been able to communicate better, we'd have a store in Oklahoma City and a store here. Right. And, you know, whatever. But who knows? I mean, yeah. Oklahoma City's popping off. Yeah, it's it so is, I man. I almost feel sorry for dude. I'm like, bro, you got more competition. You know, than you and can that's the bad thing about at. Oklahoma City is everybody wants to be there, you know, and and it's it, it's getting so saturated. And I'm like, and it kind of it, it's kind of crazy to me because I'm like, why is nobody like they're not even touching Tulsa? They don't even think, and you know, and it's good for the people that are already here. But I'm like, it's weird, you know, because it's like so much saturation going on down there. Well, they have. I mean. Someone opened a store in Broken Arrow. Yeah. And good dudes, real friendly dudes. But, I mean, I think they closed the store in, like, two or three months. Of yeah. Being open. Well, it's July now. Yeah, I think they're open for two months. Yeah. Like, you you, you have to love it and have to be obsessed with it for yeah. it to succeed. Right. So, where does that, uh, where do you think that that relationship with you guys stands now? Uh, Trav came and visited um, when we turned two years old and we had our thing. Uh-huh. Uh, we've we've talked a little bit, but we really honestly haven't talked that much since. Yeah. I, I just think, I don't know. It's one of those things that's going to take some time. To yeah, that was kind of my next question. Just, Do you think that there's a path to mending that relationship? I'm, yeah, in, any relationship can be mended. Right. But, I mean, it, it's just we're on – we're just kind of on two, two separate uh, tracks of life right yeah. now. and. And there will be a time where, where we come together and spend some time with each other. I'm sure. Like we're both uh, vending uh, DFW uh, SwapCon, okay. and, uh, and our booths are probably 30 feet from each other. Right. So we'll, we'll probably do some hanging out or yeah. talking or something. But that's good. I don't. You know, it's it's not it's not healthy to to harbor any resentment or right. anything like that. I'm not gonna. We probably both have some of that stuff, but I, we both, like you said earlier, we both have such a great respect for each other as far yeah. as just the hustle and right. everything. And I don't know, I guess he's building, he's got uh, a Josh and Pat there now, and mm. he's building a good little team. It's probably the size of his store, like a three or four person crew would rock that shit, yeah. you know? And we've built a really solid team here. Davis and I have way better communication than we did before when it kind of felt like it was like 
you know when three girls get together and when there's three there's always like a click and drama yeah that's almost how it felt like and it's silly to talk about and silly to think that we're three grown men yeah. that just bickered and fussed like yeah like teenagers or whatever <laughs> looking back it's just dumb. some mean girls type of attitude yeah, going on. <laughs> for sure, for sure. and uh so you know davis and i had a lot of mending to be to be yeah. honest like just we're on the same page now yeah so <clears throat> it's only a matter of time right until and so like sit down or something after that you know and, it, and it, now it's just like you go back to being the racks like how do you move forward from that you know what i mean like how do you how does the racks move forward after you know losing a partnership or something like that um travis's big thing was uh shoes Mm -hmm. you know i'm not into shoes at all Mm -hmm. i can give a shit about shoes yeah uh trav when he came was like bro you can't you if you're gonna be doing this clothing game like you're the store owner you gotta have some sneakers you don't look like a chump (laughs) <laughs> so, you know, I, I hit up Deadstock 405. Shout out, Sky. Love yeah. you, Uncle Sky. I hit him up. I bought, like, my first pair of expensive sneakers from Sky. Yeah. Um, But uh, the sneaker game was probably the the scariest thing to move on with. Because yeah. I, when we built this store, I built, like, the sneaker wall that we have. The right. sneaker desk for Travis specifically. Right. Right. And then I'm like, shit. We're stuck doing something I don't care about. That you don't even care about, yeah. We brought in a, a couple sneaker dudes to kind of take his place. Yeah. Um, Charlie, Charlie sells shoes. Awesome kid. Prices just like, if you want sneakers, bro, for a steal, that's the dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, JCB, JCB Tulsa on IG, brought him in. Um, this dude's collection of shoes is nutty. Yeah. Like our, we had to expand our shoe wall. We added six feet to the shoe wall. Right. Like, and now, you know, uh, Charlie's doing his own thing, but, uh, JCB's still here and yeah. we're just rocking the shoes. The shoes in the streetwear were the scariest thing to me, but I leaned on Davis cause Davis knows streetwear. Mm-hmm. And, and I think to me, the streetwear side of it was what really made me like, Okay, Davis is good at this shit. Yeah. And I'm going to trust him to guide me in the right direction on this stuff. Like, I know vintage, like the back of my hand, don't know sneakers, don't know streetwear, but he's, you know, I, my Venmo's logged into the iPad. I'm like, Davis, someone brought in streetwear. Look at it. He bought, he does the buying, kills it, kills it with the negotiations. We've got good streetwear. We've got insane sneakers. Mm -hmm. So just, Building a good team was yeah. the was the key was the to, key to moving or, forward. Or, yeah, you know, improving the team was right. the the key to moving on from from that. So. Gotcha. So let's talk about this new spot a little bit more, man. Like, how long have you been here at this new location now? October first of last year. Uh huh. So what's that? Uh, eight about ten months. Okay. At this spot. So killer, man. Dude, it killer. seems like it's been a little bit. It seems like it's been longer than that too, man. It seems like. Y'all have been here for a while. I guess you guys just got so settled in, you know, it was like seen from day one. You know, a lot of times whenever people get new stores, it, it's kind of bare and stuff, bro. Mm-hmm. I remember that grand opening, man. We walked in here, and this it. place was packed out. Not only was it packed with people, but it was packed with clothes. Mm-hmm. That was the most surprising thing to me because going from such a smaller location to this, I was, you know, expecting to be like, you know, a few racks in the middle, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. just guys getting started. But we walked in here, and, like, it was like, oh, shit, where do we start? Bro, There's we, so much shit. And even now, like, coming in here today, I'm thinking the same thing. Like, holy shit, there's so much more shit in here now. We've got shit, bro. Like, yeah. it's, it's, man, I, I'm i so blessed to have the girlfriend that I have who's so patient and understanding yeah. because I, I've, again, shout out Deadstock, uh, Sky. I'll go out to Sky's. And bring a truck, lo- a literal truckload of vintage home. I will clear his garage yeah. and bring, and I, I tell him every time, I'm like, man, my girlfriend's going to dump me one of these days when I come home with all, because I come home and I'll arms full, bring it in the house. <laughs> Just and she's all the like, clothes. She's like, God, you got a lot. And I'm like, oh, I'll be right back. And I'm like, in and out, in and out. And <laughs> More she's trips. like, Jesus Christ, That's funny. man. So what, um, what made you decide, like, this was the place 
for the future, you know? Did you look at other places? Oh, oh, you looked at a bunch of I? them? Did I? Yeah. Shout out my landlord. Yeah. Moored Horse Properties. He's, the, he's a G. Yeah. Uh, no, we, we found a spot over on 18th and Boston that we were kind of in love with right across from uh, Mercury Lounge. Uh-huh. And uh, that landlord, like, they jerked me around for months, yeah. bro. Serious. Three or four months. Of really? Just arguing, going back and forth. They're wanting these spreadsheets of this and profit this and margins this and blah. I'm like, bro, we sell old clothes. We're clearing 20 grand in a closet, bro. Yeah. Like, in a closet. There's uh, no that, windows. We're going to no, pay the rent. <laughs> there's no you, nothing, yeah. bro. I can pay this rent with my eyes closed. Right. Put us over here with some traffic. Yeah. They they just wanted more and more and they just they had no faith in us whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was finally I was like I guess it's a sign. And uh, my friend called me about this spot and was like, Hey, there's a spot over here. You should check it out. Yeah. And I you know I drive by and I'm like, This is a little run down. There's the the sketchy massage parlor next door. <laughs> I'm like, do I want to be next next to like a, a alleged rub and tug? Yeah. You know? like, what's alleged. Going on? Alleged. Alleged. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know. And then another girl who's a reseller is uh-huh. like, hey, have you seen that spot? I'm like, yeah, I've seen it. Like, why would I want to be next to this massage parlor thing? A third <laughs> girl, a third reseller, like, told me about it. I'm like, there's bars on the windows. Oh, why do all this. these, hold on a second. Why do all these resellers know about this spot right next to the massage parlor? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Maybe, the, I don't know, the, the sp- dispo across the street, man. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll chop it up to there's the There's a Bill and Ruth's, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Whatever. About the sixth person who yeah. told me about this spot within a month. Yeah. I'm like, why am I getting all these texts? Like, yeah. are these people in on this shit? Are they in a cut? Yeah. Like, I was like, I guess I'll go check it out. Happened to drive by here, and there's a maintenance dude in here. The doors were open. I came in. He's all, I think he's drunk, honestly, yeah. like painting walls. Like, he's got beer cans all over. I'm like, just this came from guy's the massage wild. Parlor. And then, yeah, just came from the <laughs> massage parlor, all relaxed. Um, I'm like, I don't know, man, this, it's kind of shady, but at the same time, I'm like, if the landlord's got this dude in here yeah. doing maintenance, he's probably pretty chill. Right. So I went and I, uh, called him and all that. He was supposed to meet me up here. No showed. Yeah. My God, here we go. Here we go again. Yeah. So I just drove up to his office. Nicest dude was so chill. I yeah. was like, so you want this much for it? You know, X amount. And he's like. Yeah. Tell you what, I'll give you 250 bucks off. I'm like, oh, I didn't even ask for that, but okay. Yeah, I didn't even and so know I was like, You know what? Right off 15th, lots of traffic. Let's do it. Yeah. Man, that's dope, man. That's a cool story, man. For the people out there, though, that's like thinking about starting their own business, like, what was like that? What, how do you think that that like process affected, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of disc, did it disc, do you think it kind of helped discourage, like, did it kind of discourage you from, wanting to do it even yeah. or yeah man everything's discouraging yeah it's like when you're afraid of doing something you're you're looking for excuses looking more for, than you are yeah. looking for the opportunities yeah and yeah i was like you know what maybe we'll just stay in the old location maybe we'll just cap ourselves out at this and yeah. and um all these landlords are dicks and none of us me davis travis like we're all so laid back and just we're not professional at anything, yeah. man. We're good at what we do, but we're just lax about Gonna be it, yourself, you know? Yeah. And uh, so all these, like, big shot property owners, they want this and they want that and all this yeah. stuff. I'm like, bro, I'm not a, a freaking Excel spreadsheet expert. Like, right. I, I don't know what you want from me. I can give you profit. I can give you expenses. Uh, do with it as you will. Yeah. So, yeah, it made me – it made me – it was super discouraging. Yeah. But – I think if you, for someone who wants to start a business, like, dude, just barrel through that shit. Yeah. And once you're past it, you're past it. Yeah. Like, now, like, you know, the landlord loves me. Right. And we pay our rent early. Yeah. Like, I'm, he loves us. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I feel like I bother him every once in a while about some maintenance or something. But yeah. for the most part, we take care of everything ourselves for the most part. And he loves us. Right. I'll tell anybody. Like I said, I was 37 years old when I pulled the trigger on my dream. Yeah. And I'll tell anybody, like, don't be like me. Don't yeah. waste your time. Learn yeah. learn from, I guess, your elders, you know, right. or whatever. Like, I don't <laughs> want to call myself an elder, but, you know, for a 20-year-old kid or whatever, like, I've lived twice as long as you. Right. Like, 
just do the shit, just man. Just do the shit. And if you fail at it, you failed at it. Big deal, yeah. man. And move on to something else, man. Yeah. I failed at so much shit along the way, man. Yeah. Like two or three clothing brands we started up. Right. We felt like we were doing okay. We made some few commas or whatever here and there, but yeah. ultimately fail, fail, fail right. until this. And, yeah. you know, two years old, like I said, most businesses have failed by their second birthday. Right. So I feel like we're on the right track. Right. So. Yeah. And that's such an important lesson, too, to like teach, you know, to tell people because it's such a it almost seems like a cliche thing to say, you know, oh, just keep going, just keep going. But it is so true, you know, because I'm in that stage right now where I'm having to tell myself, like, you just got to keep going. You know, no, I know it, I know you don't see the light yet, but you got to keep 100%. going because, you know, I, I feel like I've, I've been doing this for not a long time, but I've done it for a good amount of time. And it's like not seeing any money coming in, not seeing any. And it's sometimes it really does. You know, I'm like. Nobody wants to come on the pod, you know, I can't get big guests, you know, I can't, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, you know, how do I continue to move forward, but it's like, you just gotta keep putting your foot forward, like, even today, you know, like, like you said, you're kind of looking for excuses, you know, sometimes, like, today, like, I just kind of feeling a little shitty, you know, all day at work, I'm just like, oh, fuck, I gotta shoot this pod, and I'm like, ah, oh, I should just reschedule, and then I'm just like, nah, you can't, like, you gotta just keep going, like, you know that you need this episode, you know what I'm saying, like, you got an episode that needs to come out soon, like, yeah. you gotta get to it, and so, it's just, it is such an important lesson for everyone that is, you know, thinking about doing something for themselves, like, it ain't gonna be easy, you know, and if it is easy, you know, anything that, what is the saying, like, anything easy is not worth having or something like that or yeah, everyone hates on me because i like g easy the rapper i know <laughs> so whatever but uh he he says in one of his songs if, if it was easy everyone would do it exactly and i dude i feel that I every feel it, yeah. single day of I my do, life yeah. and it, it's, it's you know you want to get it to that point where you make it look easy but it's never, you know what I'm saying, easy as, mm -hmm. as easy as people think. You know, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of people probably watch these pods and probably think we just come in here, sit down, and just start talking. You know what I mean? But like, you've seen me, you know Bro, what I'm saying? Bro, you busted your ass for like an hour. An hour just to set this thing up. You know what I mean? Up. Like, yeah. and then I got to go home and edit. You know what I mean? There's so much to it. And I'm sure the same with you. People probably just walk in here and think, you know, you just put a bunch of clothes on the rack. Yeah, but like, 100%. There's so much, too, like the curation, you know, the, the way you lay it out, you know, the way that you want it to look and everything. Like, it's so much to it. The content side of it, the running, you know what I'm saying, promoting it. Because I think nowadays, bro, it's it's almost impossible to have uh, to start a business without social media. It's not impossible, but it's, it's, it's getting close. It's not the close, smartest you know? move. You said what? I said it's not the smartest move. It's like, not the smartest move. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's hard to. to we do live off without. social media. We don't even have a legit website, man. Right. We just live off Instagram. Off Instagram, man. yeah. And that's how. I mean, even at Tintos, you know what I'm saying? Like most people know, you know what I'm saying? There's no website there, you know. Mm -hmm. But like our Instagram, you know, is how we stay yeah. relevant. You know, one of the ways that we stay relevant, you know, of course, being in the mall and stuff like that as well, you know, and having that that good location. Built in traffic in the mall, man. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely Peace. some good traffic in there. But like just having that social media presence is so freaking like important to mm -hmm. like staying relevant. How do you think like social media? Are you, do you like the social media side of it? Do you kind of deal with it? Do you take part in that, or do you? Kinda Davis does ninety percent of yeah. the social media. I mean, we post on the story sometimes. He's got a very specific um, look, I guess. Yeah. That he wants to aesthetic. That he yeah. wants to um, achieve. Right. So uh, we bickered back and forth for a long time. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. And then I was just like, you know what? I'll accept it. It's yeah. one less thing I have to do. Ultimately, what yeah. am I thinking? Why am I mad that that he <laughs> wants to take ownership yeah. of something? Plus, it gives him that pride. Like he owns the Instagram, yeah. and and he kills it. So, yeah, he does. He I does. mean, I do like the, a lot of the content, like the racks put. I like I like that aesthetic that he does. It feels like it ties into the racks very well. You know, it, it has yeah. a venti vintagey kind of feel to it so I, I like whenever i look at the racks you see something from the racks and you know like this is a vintage story you know you can tell by the way it looks it yeah. looks like vintage so that's cool yeah yeah so um kind of gonna get off track here a little oh no, no 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 actually i wanted to talk about like now that you do have the place um you guys do have the room i mean we got a lot of room in here and stuff 
let's talk about some of the things that you've been able to do like for the community such as like the comedy shows and things like that like how has that kind of had an impact on the store and the business man it it, it killed it it hurt me more than people would know yeah. moving here and not being able to do like the block party yeah. stuff because we we got to give back to a lot of vendors i'm not gonna lie when we did the the block parties you would cook way more than we did. People wouldn't even come in this store and they just flat out tell us like, I can come to your store any day. I'm just going to shop all these vendors. Yeah. So it was great being able to put all of the local resellers on. Right. So it killed us for a while. Um, not being able to give back, but yeah, I think it was Evan Hughes approached us about a comedy show. Mm -hmm. So we were like, eh, I don't know, like people going to come like whatever. We do it once a month now. And, killed it man yeah. like evan and all of his friends and i mean it's fun man like uh we do it typically on a thursday night midwest bj put one or two on from uh -huh. uh, 105 but they're great we do them all free you know i go shout out pie hole pizza i go next door and buy a bunch of pizzas yeah uh you know byob just chill yeah. drink free pizza free drinks whatever the comics get a little bit of exposure and, yeah. and all that stuff. Right. Uh, so that, that's been great for them. Uh, we've done a, one or two pop-ups just kind of in like the side lot. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to do those a little heavier when fall comes and it's not, you know, 400 degrees outside. Dude, yeah. Uh, it, it was received really well in the, in the, the sellers that did it, they had a blast. So yeah. when the weather's good, I mean, we want to be able to use the space to, to put local other local people on right. you know we do um we've been doing a pop-up with um uh till death permanent jewelry mm -hmm. and they do like the anklets and all that stuff okay. they set up in here um we, we've done a few things like that but we're, we're starting to to grow more towards getting back to those right. roots kind of so but. so um so now like where do you think like the direction of the racks is going like what's next for the racks you know what can the people expect to see from the racks as we kind of get here to the end of the pod here you know what, what can we expect to see in the future um couple pipe dreams i guess yeah like, if if the massage parlor were ever to be gone <laughs> You know that. You know that massage. Well, they might go somewhere eventually. You know what I mean. Yeah, hey, I ain't gonna say more. why they're gonna go somewhere, but <laughs> my my goal is to get that space and uh -huh. have a s sneaker store. So the sneakers aren't just a part of the racks. That'd be cool. We have a sneaker store and the racks, right. and it's in one building. Right. You know, bust out part of that wall, and you can go back and forth yeah. between sneaker store and this. That um, I I really want to open a location um, out south. Okay. Uh, near the mall, I, I've, there's this spot that I don't know why it's been open for as long as it's been open, but I've yeah. had my eyes on it for a long time. Yeah. I knock on wood. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I'd really like to sign the lease on that by the end of the year and have you know the racks out south nice. and one in Midtown. That that's oh, yeah. kind of the goal. I, I eventual goal. Yeah. Ten years down the line is to have five or six different locations five or six different I, I this is weird but my favorite city in the u.s is pittsburgh pennsylvania i uh, love it yeah there. you said that you were a big steelers fan at the beginning Steelers, yeah. penguins pirates everything you really you know, i've got some family up there oh okay i love it up there yeah i'd really like to open a store up there and right if not for anything else an excuse to go up there yeah but they're they're killing it up there like they've got monarch studios uh, branded in butler a bunch of really good stores and uh -huh. really good resellers and mm. a really cool scene up there yeah. plus all the sports and it's fun up yeah. there. it's beautiful too yeah so that's that's a goal probably about a five-year goal right so. all right man well man oh okay i got one last question for you one last question if you could see one person on the pod who would it be slobby robbie Slobby Robbie, who's that? Uh, Whoever you say, also, you got to help us get him on there, man. Shit. Um, <sighs> all right. So, local, smaller person, let's say Sky, Deadstock 405, uh -huh. would be an absolute hoot on a podcast, bro. Okay. Like, he's like our, you know, I'm kind of the old man, but Sky's like two years older than me, so yeah. we give him the shit for being like Uncle Sky, you know? Yeah. He'd be great. Uh, Slobby Robbie out of Arizona. Um, 
uh, uh, Slobby's World on Netflix mm -hmm. was a, a, clo a show about his vintage clothes mm. store. Uh, Generation Cool is what it's called. Okay, he's he's a wild dude. He's a character. It's the, he has a show on Netflix. Yeah, he did. He What's did. It? I think they took it off. It was uh, Slobby's World. But, Slobby's World. Mm -hmm. You probably find it somewhere though. Huh? Yeah. I'm An ultimate it. pipe dream to see on on the pod would be, of course, Sean Weatherspoon, bro. Yeah. Like, Come on, dude. That, That'd be lit. Round two of the show was like, when I discovered round two of the show on YouTube, Yeah, was when I was doing a bunch of pop-ups, uh -huh. and I discovered round two, and I, and I watched it like it was not like, not like it was a show. I watched it like it was a tutorial. Yeah. And I, I took notes on it. Yeah. Like a weirdo, bro. Yeah. And I was like, I am going to open a store. Right. It, these guys are fucking awesome. Right. I'm going to make this happen. And that oh, was yeah. probably, at that point... Like my biggest motivation, and yeah. then Generation Cool came out, and I was like, "This dude's hilarious." Mm -hmm. Like, the joke was that I was going to be Slobby Robbie for Halloween last year, but you have to look him up. Bro. Yeah, because I have no clue who that is. So I'm like, hilarious, yeah. dude. Like, yeah, seems like a funny name, Slobby Robbie. Yeah, but as for locals, get Sky on the pod. Yeah. Sky would be hilarious, man. He, he's, yeah, I have, to, I have to reach out. I don't even know who that is. I've never met him before. You don't know so. Sky? Mm -mm. Sky? Sky's a sneaker reseller who who got into vintage. Uh -huh. Like, he did sneakers and streetwear. That was, like, his passion. Gotcha. And he got into vintage, and, uh, bro, he's, like, he's the goat when it comes to sourcing. Yeah. He's got a two-car garage that looks like a rag house. Really? And we go out there and just, he, he's the plug, man. Yeah. And, He's oh, yeah. hilarious because he tries to put people on these younger cats explaining stuff. Yeah, and he gets all frustrated. Yeah, he he would be. <laughs> That's funny. Guess. That's how a lot of those older guys are. You know what I mean? They just want to give. They just want to give the knowledge, bro. And a lot of these young cats out here, they don't care about that. They want to. They think they know everything. You know, I was that way. You know what I'm saying? When I was growing up. Now I'm 26 now, so I'm finally like starting to realize like. Yo, these old cats, these old heads, they got a lot of knowledge, you know. What We've mean? been so, through the shit. We've right. been through all the shit, you right. know, and it's the same. I mean, my mom, grandpa, you know, all that stuff. Like, they've been through the shit. Right. You know, your parents try to, or whoever, your adult, you know, your figures in your life that are older, they've been through the shit. People right. tell you to do stuff or not to do stuff for a reason. It's not, they're not just talking to just talk, talking to you talk, know. Yeah. But that's how every, everyone, for the longest, and maybe me still to this day, we all think we know everything, yeah. you know, until you get to the point where, again, listening is important. When you can shut up and really hear what people are telling you and visualize it, that's when you start building yourself. Right. You know? Well, guys, that's going to be the end of the pod today, guys. We had a really great time with you guys today. Um, my freaking computer literally just died, so our oh. microphones aren't even working right now. Oh, <laughs> so we're going strictly off these mics right here. But, hey, we appreciate you guys for staying tuned, for watching, for listening, however you consume the pod today. Um, as, again, we had the Ra Sean from the Racks here in Tulsa. Um, go ahead and just shout the people out where the people can find you, uh, where they can pull up to. Um, and if you guys can't hear it, I'm going to put everything that he says in the description. You want me to yell it? I can yell. I can Go ahead. Just make sure that they hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're at 2646 East 15th Street. Uh, the I guess kind of the hood side of Cherry Street. Um, yeah, I can't miss it. At the Racks Tulsa on IG. Uh, at uh, uh, JCB Tulsa to see our sneakers or JCBTulsa.com to see our sneakers. Vintage is one on one, so it's not online anywhere. But uh, yeah, and uh, shout out Pie Hole Pizza, Deadstock, Davis, JCB, Brandy, Casey, Prester, uh, everybody, the whole crew, everybody. Shout out. Gang, gang. Hey, man. <laughs> That's the end of the pod today, man. We appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that follow. We'll see you guys next week for another episode. We out. Dope, bro. Cool. Killed that shit, man. Hell yeah, bro.